Allure magazine, the actress and former MTV video jockey discussed her vibrant career moving from Australia to the United States and her take on straight women trying to win her heart. Rose said, when people say that I've turned them gay, I just laugh because that's not really an even a possibility. The famously gender fluid celebrity who Galore magazine noted had been such far before it became a mainstream phenomenon speculated the phrase she turned me gay, which has become a tagline for her online communities like Tumblr and in real life is a superficial line and nothing more. Uh, she said, people will say to Jennifer Lawrence, I want to be your best friend or to Taylor Swift, I want to be in your squad. Everyone has their little thing. And the catchphrase I got after orange was she turned me gay. The model and actress says, ultimately, that statement is just a form of endearment or a compliment, but it's not real. Earlier this month, Rose was presented with the Stephen F. Kulczak Award by Taylor Swift at the 27th Annual GLAAD Media Awards. After the event, Rose reflected on the true story of how one sometimes girl, me, was surprised and brought to tears by a surprise, always amazing and giving girl at Taylor Swift. Following her successful role in Netflix's Orange is New Black, Rose will appear in the films Resident Evil, The Final Chapter, John Wick 2, and Triple X, The Return of Xander. Jennifer Lopez reflected on her fame since joining American Idol in 2011, saying industry professionals still value women less than men in entertainment. Speaking with W Magazine for its latest issue, the Ain't Your Mama singer says coming aboard the scene competition as a judge has helped communicate her relatability, but it hasn't fixed anything. She told the outlet it has been easier. People may now think I'm nice, but they still act surprised when I'm smart. It's a man's world, and truly people in a business setting do not value a woman as much as as a man. I feel like I'm constantly having to prove myself. If a man does one thing well, people immediately say he's a genius. Women have to do something remarkable over and over and over and even then, they get questions about their love life. Lopez is one of the busiest women in show business with several projects underway, including a television drama series, Las Vegas Residency and an upcoming album. She's also just wrapped up her four-year gig as a judge on American Idol. She says, I do have trouble saying no. It's hard for me not to imagine doing everything I am at to do. Luckily, I love the work. The Shades of Blue actress has recently faced intense negative feedback on her latest single, which was co-produced by Dr. Luke, whom the singer Kesha accused of abusing her sexually and emotionally. Lopez released a song last week during the American Idol Farewell episode. And your mama writer Megan Trainer came to Lopez's defense, telling reporters she felt, quote, terrible about all the hate Lopez had received for debuting the song amid the Dr. Luke court battle. In 2014, Kesha filed a lawsuit attempting to break out of her contract with Dr. Dr. Luke, whom she claimed sexually assaulted her. Trainer said, it was not fair on her, not at all. I texted her this song and she had no idea. She thought I did it alone by myself at my house, which a lot of people think because I do do that. Lopez never worked directly with Dr. Luke, E! News reports, and Trainer claimed the Bronx-born superstar hadn't a clue he was part of the project. Trainer wrote the song with Jacob Kashner, with Dr. Luke have been involved in its early production. The song was probably written years ago before Kesha's lawsuit. Kourtney Kardashian is open to a possible reconciliation with ex-partner Scott Disick. The 36-year-old reality star discussed her future with the 32-year-old club promoter on Tuesday's episode of the Today Show following a series of friendly reunions with Disick and their children. Kardashian admitted when asked if she and Disick will get back together, I don't know. We're not getting back together right now, but I don't know what the future holds in life and God's plan. But we're just doing our best to be the best parents. She also added, like, he came with us to Valley and it was great, uh, talking about her family's recent trip to Colorado. She also added, but like, we're friends at this point. I don't know if I miss him. I mean, we talk all the time, so I feel like I don't really get that chance. Kardashian and Disick were together for nine years before splitting in July. The former couple shares six-year-old son Mason, three-year-old daughter Penelope, and 16-month-old son Rain, and took their eldest, the two eldest, to the Wizarding World of Harry Potter in March. Disick said of Kardashian after the trip, she's my best friend. I love her to the day I I die. We're just trying to make the best of it and life goes on. Things aren't easy but things are going very well right now. I'm just happy that we're able to be on good terms. He added of a possible reconciliation. I don't really rule anything out. I don't have plans in mind of what's going to happen. So, you know, if things are meant to be, they will be. Disick jokingly said that he and Kardashian are getting back together in a flirtatious Snapchat video last month. Kardashian previously downplayed their frequent reunions, telling her followers people that have three kids together spend time together. 
Australian rapper Iggy Azalea hasn't decided whether she'll go through with her wedding to basketball superstar Nick Young. The 25-year-old Australian rapper discussed her future with the 30-year-old Los Angeles Lakers star on Wednesday's episode of The Burt Show after a leaked tape showed Young discussing other women. Azalea said of the scandal, I'm still figuring it all out. I think last year, the last year that I had, has kind of thought me uh, maybe it's best to just wait until it's like a little more past tense before you kind of speak about necessarily how you feel about something she elaborated when you're in the heat of the moment and things are still progressing or coming out and you're getting new information the way you feel about things can change really quickly it can go up and down so i'm just kind of still figuring it out the team rapper refused to predict the likelihood of her marrying young explaining she just quotes needs to give it some time she also said she and the nba player will have to figure it out the future once she returns home from her press tour azalea and young made headlines in March after Young's teammate D'Angelo Russell secretly recorded him discussing women he met while dating Azalea. An unknown source later leaked the video and many speculated the couple would call off their engagement. Azalea said of her engagement on the Ellen DeGeneres show last week, that's going good, we're good, there isn't controversy at home, just on the internet. Azalea and Young have been together since 2013 and got engaged in June. The rapper revealed she and Young are postponing their wedding shortly before the video leaked, citing her upcoming tour. Led Zeppelin founders Jimmy Page and Robert Plant are heading to court over Stairway to Heaven's plagiarism claims. Los Angeles District Judge R. Gary Klausner ruled that there are enough similarities between the band's 1971 hit and the spirit song Taurus for a four-page and plan to face trial May 10th. Michael Skidmore, a trustee for late spirit guitarist Randy Wolf, a.k.a. Randy California, sued Led Zeppelin for copyright infringement in 2014 on behalf of Wolf's estate. Skidmore claims Page copied the Stairway to Heaven guitar line from Taurus. Klausner said in his ruling Friday, while it's true that a descending chromatic four chord progression is a common convention that abounds in the music industry, the similarities here transcend this core structure. Skidmore believes Page and Plant hurt Taurus when Led Zeppelin opened for Spirit in 1968 and later appropriated the song for Stairway to Heaven. Page and Plant claim to have written the song in a remote cottage in Wales. Uh, Skidmore's attorney Francis Malify says, a lot of songs written by Led Zeppelin were written by other artists and other bands. They failed to give credit where credit was due. Taurus was copyrighted in 1967, while Stairway to Heaven was released in 1971. The latter track is considered to be one of the greatest rock songs of all time and has earned an estimate $528 million as of 2008. Los Angeles Lakers for Kobe Bryant is playing his final NBA game Wednesday and tributes are pouring in for a player also known as the Black Mamba. Brands, teams, and the NBA itself devoted significant attention to Bryant's retirement, but so did fans and most of his former rivals and teammates. Former Lakers teammate Karen Butler wrote an ode to Bryant for the Washington Post, thanking him for embodying everything that a professional athlete is supposed to embody and that helped me so much throughout my career. He also wrote that Bryant's departure will leave a, quote, huge void. On the corporate side, Bryant's sponsor Nike launched a promotion using the hashtag hashtag Mamba Day in honor of his final game. Fans either love or hate Bryant and late Nike made light of that with the video of the basketball star stopping mid-game to conduct his haters, famous and anonymous, in a rousing song. Even Phil Jackson sings the tweet, always love the hate. Bryant's 81-point game ranked second for most points ever scored in a game. Will Chamberlain holds the number one spot with 100 points and scored in 1962. Michael Jordan's top-scoring game was 69 points against the Cavaliers in 1990. The Lakers devoted numerous posts and reposts to the future Hall of Famer, tweeting, Today we say goodbye to a legend. But perhaps most touching was a letter penned by former Los Angeles great Irvin Magic Johnson. He tweeted a link to it, followed by another post where he says, I've enjoyed every minute of your career of your career. Hashtag thank you, Kobe, for all the fantastic memories. Lakers teammate Paul Casal, known early on as the white swan to Brian's black swan, tweeted Kobe meant a lot of things to me over the years. Here's my last word. He tweeted, included his, his picture with the word hermano over it, brother in Spanish. Tiger Woods got into the act with his tweet and self uh, and vandalized with the uh, hashtag Mamba Day hashtag and the 413th day. He tweeted, as a diehard at Lakers fan, thank you at Kobe Bryant for all the memories and, of course, the five titles. 
Rapper Kendrick Lamar teamed up with ESPN for a loving tribute to Brian called Kobe Bryant's Fade to Black set to Lamar's Untitled 07. Respect for Bryant started from day one in the NBA with predictions that he would be, quote, the next Michael Jordan, which launched two decades of arguments that won't end with his, atti- with his retirement. And here are the top 10 songs on the Billboard Hot 100 singles charts for the week of April 23rd. Number 10, g Easy and Baby Reha with Me, Myself, and I. Number 9, Fifth Harmony fe- featuring Ty Dollar Sign with Work From Home. Number 8, Mike Posner with I Took a Pill in Ebenezer. Number 7, Flo Rida with My House. Number 6, Justin Bieber with Love Yourself. Number 5, Designer with Panda. Number 4, Zay Malik with Pillow Talk. Number 3, Megan Tran with No. Number 2, Lucas Graham with Seven Years. And the number 1 song on the Billboard Hot 100 singles charts for the week of April 23rd, Rihanna featuring Drake with work. And now let's take a look at what happened on this date in entertainment history. On this date in 1969, the very first annual Academy Awards are broadcast live to a television audience in 37 nations. It was the first time the awards had been televised worldwide as well. The first Oscar ceremony to be held in the Dorothy Chandler Pavilion of the Los Angeles Music Center. Adding to the momentous nature of the night was the first Oscar tied in a major acting category in more than three decades. Ingrid Bergman explained, exclaimed upon opening the Best Actress envelope, it's a tie. The award went to both Catherine Hepburn for her turn as Eleanor of Aquitaine in The Lion in Winter and Barbara Streisand for her performance in Funny Girl. Reprising her role in the hit Broadway musical, Streisand earned rave reviews for her portrayal of Fanny Bryce, the quintessential ugly ducky who blossoms into a sophisticated and beautiful star. It was the 11th Oscar nomination for Hepburn, who had won Best Actress the previous year for Guess Who's Coming to Dinner and had not expected to repeat. She was the no show at the April 14th ceremony an emotional Streisand stole the moment cooing hello gorgeous her opening line in funny girl upon accepting her gold golden Oscar both Streisand and Hepburn received 3,030 votes each it was the first exact tied in principal Oscar category when Frederick March who put uh, whose role in Dr. Heck, Heck Jekyll and Mr. Hyde and Wallace Beery the champ split the award for best actor in 1932 Beery had actually received one less vote than March the rules at the time stated that if any nominated film or artist came within three votes of winning in a principal category the result would be considered a tie there have been other Oscar ties over the years, twice in the Best Documentary category in 1949 and 1986, and one for Best Live Action Short Film in 1986. And as your entertainment report for Thursday, April 14, 2016, I'm your host, Mr. Downtown Ray Mello. I'll be back tomorrow to deliver some of, some of the major stories and trends going on in the world of entertainment and beyond. You can follow the show on Facebook, Twitter, or Instagram, facebook.com slash the entertainment report with Ray Mello. That's R-E-Y-M-E-L-O on Twitter at The Enter Report or on Instagram at The Entertainment Report. You can listen to this episode or any previous episodes of The Entertainment Report anytime you want on iHeartRadio. Just go to iHeart.com or your iHeart phone app, search for The Entertainment Report, and it'll take you to the page. Good night, and God bless you all.